Hello everyone. So today we're going to talk about Azure AD Domain Services. So first an introduction, what this is, and then a step-by-step -step walkthrough guide on creating a domain services a managed domain and looking at the different portal options and settings, enabling password hash sync, and configuring a virtual network for DNS to enable a Windows server to join the managed domain. So let's get started. Okay, so this is an add-on video discussing Azure AD Domain Services and following on from learning the differences between uh, Active Directory on-premise and Azure Active Directory in the Azure Cloud as identity. In previous videos, we looked at the whole IT landscape from the early days of traditional Active Directory on-premises right up to the current cloud identity using Azure AD. So if you missed that video, the links are in the description. We will also have future videos on domain join to Azure AD domain services and management of the unique namespace. So please subscribe to the channel to receive notifications on future up and coming videos on lots of different topics on Azure and Microsoft 365 services. Thank you. OK, so what is Azure AD domain services or AADDS for short? Well, AADDS is a managed domain service which allows uh, Windows Domain Join, Group Policy, LDAP on, and Kerberos authentication. So without having to deploy, manage or patch domain controllers. So we could build a, a Windows VM in Azure. We could promote it to a, a domain controller in a traditional way like you would on-premise. However, this would mean we would need to uh, network connectivity back to our on-premise domain via Express route or a VPN, and we would need to manage these VMs for patching, downtime, resilience, etc. Azure ADDS Managed Domain also allows legacy applications in the cloud that can't use modern authentication. So with AADDS, this is fully managed for us by Microsoft, so we don't need to worry about patching, deploying, managing. Microsoft also includes backups and encryption. We don't require network connectivity back to on-premise, and we can use password hash sync through AD Connect and Azure AD as shown in the diagram. So we perform a one-way sync of users, groups and credentials from Azure AD. This allows us to use NTLM, Kerberos Authentication, LDAP and Group Policy. So we can join a Windows server to the managed domain. Once deployed, they are created in a, an Azure virtual network subnet where servers can access the managed domain services for authentication through a single VNet or through VNet peering. Passwords for users in AADDS are the same as in your uh, Azure AD tenant. So users can use their credentials to um, domain join machines. They can sign in uh, interactively over remote desktop or authenticate using uh, the managed domain. The domain is a, a unique namespace with a 15 character limit. So it's separate to any other DNS namespace to avoid conflict. So in this scenario, our on-premise domain is cloudinspired.com and our Azure AD domain services namespace is dscloudinspired.com. Now we will show how AADDS is deployed and created in the Azure portal for the next section. OK, good. So now let's create an Azure AD domain services instance by going to create resource. So now we search for Azure Domain Services and then we click Create. I will create this in its own resource group called AADDS. For the DNS namespace, remember a unique domain namespace is required with a 15 character limit. So it needs to be separate to any other DNS namespace to avoid conflict. So in our case, it's named as dscloudinspired.com. We choose our region as UK South and leave the default SKU. So let's take a look at the different SKU options. In this example, we are looking at deployment in UK South and monthly billing. So please note when you create and deploy AADDS in your tenant, you will get billed for it. OK, so in our example for Enterprise User Forest, it's 246 UK pounds per month. So please be aware of what you will be charged um, for your country and where you deploy, which region it's going to be in. 
before you deploy f in your own environment to, to avoid unexpected bills. And of course, those prices are subject to change, so always check beforehand exactly what you're going to be billed per month. So different SKUs, standard, enterprise and premium, they have different features such as object count and backup frequency. So please choose to match to your own environment and requirements. OK, so for the networking section, we're going to use an existing VNet we've already created rather than creating a new one. So we will create a new subnet using a 10.0, 2.0 uh, address range. So we click next. OK, and then we'll leave any notifications um, as default. So the same for synchronization um, and any uh, security settings there. And then we will review and then we will create. Here we will see a message that these settings are final and can't be changed after creation. So click OK to accept. OK, so it will take a while to deploy. So I've stopped the video here during the creation process. Uh, so once, you, once created, you will see running with a, a green tick. We can view the health and we can see there's no alerts, so it's all good. So we can also scroll down to settings and, and see the, the settings available to us there. You can see under properties the IP range there applied. So this will be added to our DNS addresses later uh, in our VM to resolve DNS and for the VM domain join to work correctly. There is an LDAP section, so you can enable secure LDAP can choose to sync all users and groups or select what's required to be synced. You can view replica sets or add new as required. You can establish trust relationship for on-premise AD DS forests. You can see our help of our managed DCs and we can change notification settings as well for any issues encountered. You can change the SKU level. And also change any security settings required for TLS, NTLM, Password Sync and Kerberos. OK, so we will now follow the best practice to enable Password Sync. So you need to configure uh, Azure AD Connect to synchronize password hashes. This is required for NTLM and Kerberos authentication. So after Azure AD Connect is configured, um, an on-premise account creation or password change event is also then synchronizes the, the legacy password hashes to Azure AD. A PowerShell script is used to configure the required settings and then we can start a full password synchronization to um, Azure AD. So when that Azure AD Connect password hash sync it process is complete, users can then sign in to applications through AADDS and use uh, legacy NTLM or Kerberos password hashes. OK, so let's now go to the server that's running AD Connect. And as you can see, we have a, a handful of users um, in the on-premise domain for cloudinspired.com that are synced to Azure AD. And as shown in the uh, Azure portal, these are synced to, to Azure AD. So if you need a video to explain um, AD Connect setup and configuration, there is a video within the Cloud Inspired channel giving a step-by-step -step guide on this. So if we take a look at the Azure AD Connect status within the portal, we can see um, password hash sync isn't enabled. So let's enable it using our PowerShell. So what we do is we run synchronization services. OK, and we go to connections. And then we will copy our PowerShell script. We will paste this into Notepad and then we will fill in the AD Connector parameters taken from the Sync Manager as shown.
We will then open PowerShell and run the script for password hash sync. And then when we take a look back um, in the portal, we can see this is uh, now enabled. Also, if we look in AD Connect, we can also see that's now the, the sign in method. OK, good. So now we will configure our virtual network in Azure to point to the DNS IP address of our managed domain. So this will enable us to use name resolution and then join a VM that's built uh, in that VNet to join to the dscloudinspired.com domain. So we copy the IP address of the managed domain controller. We go to the VNet. Go to DNS and then we add in the custom IP addresses here. So in the next video, which will follow shortly, we will show a Windows server built in that VNet and we will join it to the dscloudinspired.com domain. So that's it for now. Please subscribe to the channel to receive notifications on up and coming videos. Thank you for watching and take care. Thanks. Bye.